everyone, this is episode two of Project Diesel Disco. In this video, I just wanted to do a quick walk around of this Cat C 4.4 engine uh, to show some of the features on it uh, and how I'm planning on doing some things and some interesting little bits about how they designed this. Uh, first, I also wanted to talk a bit about why I chose a C 4.4 engine. So Caterpillar has uh, doesn't have a whole lot in the smaller displacement engines. If you take a look, um, there are some, um, but trying to get something that's in that mix of having the appropriate weight for something like the Land Rover uh, with enough power to be a reasonable engine option, um, there, there's not a lot. Um, originally, I planned on trying to find a Cat 3114, which is basically a four-cylinder 3116, um, which was kind of the predecessor to the 3126 and C7 that I have in my RV uh, behind the camera. The, the C4.4 started out as a Perkins engine. With this engine, which is a 2010, it really has a, a good mix of both uh, Caterpillar and Perkins bits on it. Um, for example, the ECU is Cat. There's, um, of course, the engine says Caterpillar on it, doesn't say Perkins on it at all, other than made in the UK. But um, Caterpillar has helped to make this, make this better. And so in the end, we had a really hard time finding a 3114 that um, uh, for sale at all just because there's so few of them and the ones we could find were in questionable condition a lot of them didn't have the horsepower ratings we were looking for and the prices were really high there's a lot more c4.4s on the market um, and one of the things that's nice is that the, the c4.4 is a little bit smaller than the 3114 and a little bit lighter weight so i think both of those are going to be benefits um, and plus one of the cool things is that, so it, since it's made in the UK, it's, it's kind of a more correct engine if you want to think about it that way for a, a disco, even though these were never put in from the factory. So yeah, let's walk, walk around a little bit and uh, I'll show you some bits on the engine. So we'll start over here on what would be the driver's side. So you see that there's three filters. Down there's your fuel water separator, um, which then goes up to the fuel pump and your main fuel filter and the oil filter down there. Um, the uh, fuel water separator and the oil filter are probably mounted a little bit low for what I'm going to be doing, so I may have to relocate those, but that's a pretty simple thing to do. Um, maybe the first thing I thought was really interesting about this engine is that the ECM is mounted to the engine, which is not unusual. But if you look, you've got these, uh, these hoses, lines going to it. The CCM is actually fuel cooled. Um, they run the fuel, a certain amount of fuel through the ECM to cool it, um, which I've never seen on a, on a ground-based engine before. Um, in fact, for an ECM, I don't think I've ever seen one that's been liquid cooled before. So I think that's, so that's pretty interesting. It, it makes sense because I'm sure the injector drivers uh, generate a lot of heat in this thing. So it makes sense to have it cooled, but I thought that was an interesting feature. Um, Main fuel filters mounted up high over here. Not the best location from uh, the perspective of accessory mounting. So I may take a look at um, putting that someplace else as well, but uh, I'm not gonna worry about it for now. So up here is the water pump. And um, interestingly, if you take a look carefully through that grate there, um, you can see that the water pump is actually gear driven and not belt driven, which, um, is something that you don't normally see on automotive engines. Uh, kind of nifty, I don't know what this would have been used for, maybe for heating the hydraulic fluid in its original application, but there are um, what I'm gonna be using as heater core hoses on this, which is nice because I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna handle the heater aspects um, when I first was getting this. Up top, um, maybe before I get up top, Got the fuel pump in there. That's kind of a, just a standard high pressure fuel pump that then feeds up to this rail, which then goes and feeds all the individual injectors. And then here's the, uh, the rail, if you want to call it that, for the, uh, to power the glow plugs. Um, you've got kind of a manifold underneath all of this. And here's where the air inlet goes in uh, fr after the intercooler. Um, one of the things that I noted with this is that you can see that there's a kind of a cover plate here and then one here. So what I'm probably going to do is move the air inlet 
forward because I think that'll probably package better um, when it gets put into the disco. Water outlet up here, um, I may try to figure something out to have this come out at more of an immediate 90 degree angle uh, to make it fit better in the engine. Coming around to the back, so this is uh, uh, an SA3 bell housing uh, pattern. I'm gonna, th there are adapters that exist to made an SA3 to a lot of different applications. Um, and usually they are adapter, they're just adapter plates that go from the SA3 to say like a Chevy or a Ford bell housing pattern. So I'll have to take a look and see what makes the most sense to do there. Um, I haven't figured that out yet. But interestingly also, um, it looks like this whole bell housing assembly um, bolts off uh, or unbolts from, from the engine. And when I took a look at the, the Caterpillar uh, spec, uh, Caterpillar specification guide for these engines, uh, there, there were different options for the bell housing. So that actually creates kind of another interesting prospect of um, maybe there's an option besides doing something to adapt to the SA3, but, but this will probably make the most sense to do. You got engine mounts on the, on the back here that you can use, although weren't used in this application. Uh, relay there is for the glow plugs. And then there's the other coolant line that I'm gonna use for uh, the heater core. When you get over to this side, uh, small little turbocharger. Um, spins freely when I checked it and uh, mounted right above the starter. I'm not sure yet what's going to be the best as far as the orientation goes. Um, none of it's ideal, but I think the way they have it is probably going to be the best. Um, the exhaust can get pointed down instead of up, and that should work well for going underneath the, the uh, body of the truck. Um, and then even though the turbo inlet is pointing the wrong direction. It wouldn't be too big of a deal to do some kind of a U to get to an air filter. Uh, I'll have to figure out where that is gonna go. Um, the accessory drive on this is just a, a dual V belt right now. Um, I'm probably gonna try to change that over to a serpentine to match the existing accessories better. Um, they've got an alternator here, uh, just a, a small 65 amp one, but um, I'll, I'll be changing that around a bit. Uh, plan is to use the factory air conditioning uh, and power steering pump, but uh, we'll see what I'll have to do here. One other thing I thought was really interesting about this is uh, we all know Caterpillar engines are supposed to be yellow and this one's blue, which um, I actually can't remember, I'm not sure where the blue color comes from. But if you look uh, there and a couple of other spots, you can see that this engine was originally yellow. Um, so it seems like what happened was shortly before getting sold, it got a, just a, a quick paint job, uh, which is a little bit annoying. I wish that they'd left it yellow, even if it wasn't uh, a pretty yellow, because now I'm gonna have to repaint this. I'm not gonna put a blue engine into my Land Rover, at least not a blue Caterpillar engine. So, I hope you found this interesting. Um, just a couple of little things that uh, I, I thought, you don't see too many of these C4.4s or the Perkins around, at least I don't. Um, so I thought it was interesting to look around at some of the details of it. So hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more.